Hey guys, it's Courtney. Today we are going to be creating five cards with the Simon Says Stamp October 2019 card kit. By now, I'm sure you guys all know the contents of the kit, so I'm not gonna go over them in full detail. We are going to jump right into card number one. So I have a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock here, and I'm gonna be using my Mini Misty just because I'm using the larger image in the stamp set first time stamping it, and I wanna make sure that I get a great impression, so I do stamp this twice. First, I treated my cardstock with my anti-static tool to kind of prevent my embossing powder sticking to areas I don't want it to stick to. Then I went ahead and stamped this with a Versamark ink, and like I said, I did stamp this twice, especially stamping on white paper. You don't necessarily see if you got a good impression or not, so I'd rather be safe than sorry and stamp this twice. Next, I sprinkled on some gold embossing powder by Ranger, and I just use a coffee filter to kind of catch any excess and to dump off the excess, and that way it makes it nice and easy to dump any remaining embossing powder right back in the jar. Now, you want to make sure that you're heating up your heat gun for about 30 or 45 seconds before bringing that to the card panel. Because this is such a large area, it will minimize the warping. I find that the Bristol Smooth cardstock tends to warp a little bit more than regular cardstock, so I want to make sure that my heat gun is heated up real good. So I'm going to use some Arteza Real Brush pens here. I have a jar of water and a paper towel off to the side. I prefer to use a regular paintbrush with this, but you can certainly use just a regular water brush if you prefer. Now, I, you can see how much color I'm putting down. Real Brush pens, whether it be these or the Zigs, are very, very pigmented. And sometimes if you're just using one color, it's kind of hard to get some contrast because they're so pigmented. So I added just a teeny tiny bit going in with a damp paintbrush and you'll see that I clean off my paint, paintbrush and then I kind of dab it off to on its side on that paper towel. Then I'll bring in, in the paintbrush to the card panel itself. Now you want to make sure that you're using enough water to spread the color around, but not too much where it's pooling because then you're going to get some harsh lines. I'm also adding a little bit of shading where one petal is laying behind another that would create a shadow. So I'm just putting a little bit of pigment there. And now if I'm losing my highlight, if I'm not getting the contrast I'm looking for, you'll see that once everything is spread out and the entire petal is covered with that color, I'm drying off my paintbrush completely. I'm dabbing it off, not even dabbing it, I'm rubbing it off on that paper towel and making it as dry as I possibly can. And then bringing that into the tip of the petal and kind of wiping away some of that color. It will, the water or the dampness that's sitting on top of the paper, because that petal is still wet, will kind of be soaked in back into the paintbrush. So you'll be able to create a highlight even if you don't necessarily see one if your color spread a little bit too much. And you'll see that I'll do that with plenty of these petals, especially for the larger ones. I want a larger highlight there, so I'm just gonna kind of remove some of that color. Now for the inside of the flower, I am not going to do any shading here. These are all individual little pieces. So I'm just gonna go in with one color and just fill in that area. I'm not even using water to spread this out. I'm just gonna kind of leave it as is. Now for some of the other flowers, I did use a different color just to kind of mix it up just a little bit, but I'm not gonna show you all of the coloring for this, but I am gonna show you kind of what this color looks like once you start putting this down. But I pretty much did the shading the same exact way, laying out just a little bit of color, going in with a damp paintbrush, and then going in with a completely dry paintbrush if I need to create my highlight back in. So once all of my coloring or my water coloring was done, we're going to go ahead and assemble our card. So this is an A2 size card panel here. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere this flat down to an A2 size note card. Now you can see that my card panel is a little bit warped, but once I put this on my card base itself, it adds a little bit of weight to it. So it flattens it out just a little bit to make any additional stamping a little bit easier. So you may wanna do this first before you add your sentiment. I'm gonna use these little letter puffy stickers that come in the stamp set, as well as one of the stamped sentiments. I'm taking my T-square ruler and very lightly drawing a pencil line just so that I have a straight line as kind of my guide where to put my stickers. 
I am going to stamp the remaining part of the sentiment first with Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide ink because it's sitting right here and I figured it matched the flowers nicely. And this way the puffy stickers won't get in my way while I'm trying to do my stamping. So now that I have that straight line, I'm going to take my two middle letters and align those first. And you'll see that as I put these down, I'm kind of laying them there, but I'm not adding any pressure. I'm not sticking them down permanently in case I need to move them around. It's best to start with the middle letter or the middle two letters in this case, being we have an even number, and then kind of work around there. It just makes centering a little bit easier. So once I had all of the letters down and I was happy with the placement, I did have to kind of mess with it just a little bit to get them nice and straight. Then I can go ahead and add that pressure down or add and make them a little bit more permanent so they're not gonna come up. I went ahead and erased those pencil lines in between the little openings of those letters. And then I finished off the card with a few Nouveau Dream Drops, and these are the gold ones. I don't know the exact name of them, but I will link them below. They are, if you haven't used these yet, they're pretty much just Nouveau Drops, but they're a little bit more iridescent. They're not as solid or they're not clear like the Crystal Drops. They have a, they give a nice cool effect to it. So that is it for card number one. Moving on to card number two, I am going to be using some of the pattern paper in the kit. You can kind of get a quick look at what the pattern paper looks like in this kit. And I'm using this black and white pattern here for my card as well as a piece of black cardstock also from the kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim these down to the same size. These are going to be just slightly smaller than an A2 size card. I think they weren't even a quarter of an inch. They were more like an eight, eighth of an inch smaller than the card base itself. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more heat embossing and I'm going to use the black cardstock, the black panel that we created. And being my stamp is already lined up in my Mini Misty, I am going to leave the placement right there and pretty much stamp it in the same place for this one as I did for the first one. So I'm gonna again treat this with my anti-static tool, stamp this out with Versamark ink, and on the black cardstock, you can see it just a little bit better than you can on the white. So you'll be able to tell whether or not you got a good impression, probably the first time. Feel free to stamp it twice if you're not 100% sure. This time I am going to use white embossing powder, and this is Hero Arts white embossing powder, and go ahead and cover up that image. Again, making sure that my heat gun is heated up for about 30 to 45 seconds before bringing that to the card panel to minimize any warping. So once that was heat set, we are going to go ahead and assemble the card. So I want the black panel and the pattern panel to kind of be layered. So I'm going to take out my tonic trimmer here and I'm kind of just cutting this at an angle. There's really no rhyme or reason for it. I'm gonna test this out and see what this looks like on a card panel and realize I just wasn't leaving enough space for that pattern paper. So I just brought back out my trimmer and made that angle, I just brought it down a little bit to make the opening, I guess you could call it, not really an opening, but where you'd see <laughs> the pattern paper a little bit larger because that's where I'm gonna be putting my sentiment. Again, taking another piece of black cardstock, treating that with my anti-static tool once again, stamping out my sentiment with Versamark ink, sprinkling on that same white Hero Arts embossing powder, and heat setting that with my heat gun that is already heated up. I'm going to take my little mini tonic trimmer here. I love this little trimmer for sentiments, like sentiment strips. It's so tiny and it's so easy to line up. It's perfect for the sentiment strips. So we're gonna go ahead and assemble this now here. So I have a white A2 size note card and you can see that my panels itself are a little bit smaller than that. I'm adhering my pattern paper flat down to that card base and then I wanna pop up my black panel here. I'm using the Xfasten foam tape, which I get from Amazon and it's probably like a third of the price of the Scotch foam tape. To me, it's a lot more sticky and sometimes the backing, the backing paper is a little bit more difficult to remove because it's so sticky. But for a third of the price to me, it's totally worth a little bit of aggravation that you may have to remove the red backing there. So I layered the entire back of that panel that has that little angle there 
with that foam tape and then I'm gonna go ahead and line that up to the bottom portion of my card panel, just trying to, I'm doing my best to, to line up the pattern paper and the black panel. This foam tape is very, very sticky. So once it's down, it's down, whether or not you add pressure or not. <laughs> so for this sentiment strip, I'm just gonna trim that down a little bit so that fits right there in the opening over that pattern paper. Again, using some more of that X, X Fasten foam tape to pop that up right directly onto that pattern paper. Now this, to me, needed a little bit something extra. So instead of having totally tone on tone, even though it's still gonna be tone on tone, for the black area for the flowers, I'm gonna add a little bit of shimmer with a Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen. Now this will obviously still remain black, but it will kind of stand out a little bit more from the background. I added two layers of the shimmer, so I do let this dry in between. I don't wanna add too much moisture to my paper, especially being I have adhesive back on the back of it. So I let it dry and then I'll add a second layer to make it extra sparkly. So that is it for card number two. Moving on to the third one, I'm gonna use another piece of this pattern paper and I wanted to use this one that looks like a piece of notebook paper. So I went ahead and trimmed this down to an A2 size card or card panel, I guess you could say, but I didn't want to take off too much of it. I didn't want to take off those little holes that would fit into a binder, and I wanted to make sure it still looked like a piece of notebook paper or binder paper, whatever you want to, loose leaf paper, I think we used to call it in school. I don't even know if they still call it that, but I wanted to kind of keep that whole thing there. So next I'm gonna go ahead and do my stamping directly onto this pattern paper. I'm taking this individual flower here, I'm stamping that onto a piece of, or not a piece of, but one of the full stick post-it notes because I'm gonna use that on my mask. And then I am going to stamp that onto my card panel. I'm using Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 because it's a Copic Safe Ink. And I wanted to try out these scissors that come in the card kit. I fussy cut this, mask out with those scissors and they're super sharp. I did not have a problem fussy cutting this. I don't know whether I would use them if I planned on doing any ink blending in the background because they are serrated and they do leave a little bit of a jagged edge a little bit. So I don't know whether that would show up if I did any ink blending, but for this one, I'm not. So I don't have to worry about it. I went ahead and masked out that first flower there and I'm bringing in that second flower. I did stamp this onto the post-it note, but I didn't end up having to mask this out. I just took the little individual leaf that is in the stamp set as well and I stamped that twice, just being careful not to go over that one flower that I didn't bother masking and that was just pure laziness on my part. <laughs> so once my stamping was done, I will remove that mask and I'm going to do the Copic coloring directly onto the pattern paper. Now keep in mind that pattern paper is not necessarily great for Copic coloring. So the amount of ink that you can lay down or the amount of blending that you can actually do is going to be limited. So if you've ever watched one of my videos before, you probably would know that I normally go in with my lightest color first to get the paper saturated and ma mapping out my darkest areas, and then I'll bring in the darkest color and move my way back to the lightest color. Being I'm coloring on pattern paper and not Nina or Copic Safe or Alcohol Marker Safe paper, I'm starting directly with my darkest color. I'm not gonna get the perfect blend here, so I'm not looking for any kind of realistic look or perfect coloring. I just wanna have some contrast in each one of these petals, and I'm just going along with the lines that are part of the illustration. So you'll notice that there's little flick lines, I guess you could call them, within the illustration, and I'm just using those as a guide where, to, where I'm placing my shadows. So the RV29, I'm placing down where those flick lines are, but I'm also adding a shadow where one petal is laying under another. And this is, I guess you could call my scary dark color, and I'm using a little bit more of it than maybe I normally would, and keeping a very small highlight area. So each time I blend this out, I'm flicking these colors out a little bit more, bringing out that shadow a little bit more and leaving a very small area for the RV21, which is that highlight color, 
because I don't want to have to over blend. Sometimes when you leave a, light, a larger highlight area, you may have to go over the area a couple of times to get those colors to blend. I'm trying to not do that on pattern paper because especially using some RV markers, I'm using pretty dark colors that tend to bleed a little bit more than others. So I want to minimize the amount of ink I'm putting down on this paper. So I'm doing very little blending. Now I did keep in all of the coloring for this particular card in the video. Typically I wouldn't if it's such a long video, but just so that you guys can see what color combinations I used as well as where I placed my shadows. So for this second flower here, I'm going to bring in some V markers. And again, these tend to be a color combination that will bleed a little bit more than others. So again, one going in with that darkest color first, just paying attention to where those flick lines are and where there would be a shadow. Now, one of these petals is kind of folded over on itself all the way over to the left. I'm using that to create a shadow as well. So where that petal is laying behind another, that would create a shadow and also where it's folded over on itself, it would cast a shadow on the bottom portion of that particular petal as well. So basically where it's folded, the fold itself is going to be lighter than the rest of the petal. So my V09 was that scary dark color, blending that out with the V06, V04, and once again, leaving a pretty small highlight area for that VZ, V01. For the inside of the flowers, I'm not going to do much blending here. Same thing for the first card. I'm just going to do a little bit of shading on the outer edge of that circle and then blending that out with the Y23, but again, going in with that darkest color first. And once that was all said and done, you couldn't tell I used two different colors anyway. <laughs> for the leaves, again, going in with that darkest color first, which is the G28. This is probably my favorite green combination for leaves. For these, I'm keeping it nice and simple. I'm just adding a little bit of shading to the base of the leaves as well as the tips of the leaves. And this will appear as if they're kind of bent. I'm also creating a shadow for that bottom leaf that's kind of tucked behind that one flower that the flower would cast a shadow onto that leaf. So I am adding a little bit of shadowing there as well. So just finishing off with my lightest color there, and then we are gonna go ahead and add our sentiment. Taking one of these larger sentiments from the stamp set, again, bringing out my mini Misty, just because this is a large sentiment and I wanna make sure I have a really bold black image. I'm using dye ink, black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp, which is great for sentiments, gives you a really crisp image, and it doesn't take forever to dry because it's a dye ink. I didn't apply as much pressure as I should have, so I did have to stamp this twice just to make sure that I did get that bold black image that I was looking for. And then I adhered this down onto an A2 size note card using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue so that it was nice and flat, and it's the same size, so there's no border here. I finished off the card with some more of the Dream Drops by Nuvo, and this is the Cloud Nine. Oh, and I did add some shimmer to the flowers and the leaves with that Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Pen. And the Cloud Nine is basically white, but still, again, iridescent, not totally clear. It just has a little bit of shine to it. So I finished off the card with a few of those, and that is it for card number three. Moving on to the fourth card, I'm bringing out some of this, I think it was mirror metallic cardstock that is part of the kit. And you get four sheets, you get two rose gold and two copper. And I'm into the rose gold thing now. I just redid my craft room and I did a lot of rose gold. So I felt like this was fitting for me to use that in a card. So I have a scrap piece or a smaller piece here and I'm stamping this large image from the stamp set. And to be honest with you, I didn't know what I was doing. I was experimenting here. I tried to stamp it with my blackout ink and I applied a ton of pressure. I inked up the stamp really well and I just did not get a very good impression at all. And I knew no matter how many times I stamped it, I wasn't gonna get a good impression. So then I brought out my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamped that down. 
and I did stamp this twice, but I felt like I got a very good impression. I let this dry for about 10 minutes or so, came back, touched a little corner of one of the leaves, and it was nowhere near dry, meaning it was probably never going to dry. I was going to use Stazon, but my Stazon ink pad, being I haven't probably picked it up in about five years, is completely bone dry. So that didn't work either. So I ended up sprinkling on some clear embossing powder directly over my stamped image there, which I did not record, but I did not treat this with an anti-static tool first because I had no idea I was doing that. So I'm taking a dry paintbrush just to wipe off some of that excess embossing powder that's kind of just stuck on there where I don't want it to be, and then I heat set this. Now my heat gun was very heated up, but you can see that this paper is bending. I'm moving around my heat gun pretty quickly because I don't want to stay in one area too much, but I had some serious warping here. I was able to bend it back to the shape that I wanted it to be, but in this case it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut this out. Not the easiest thing to cut out on this paper. So if you have a scan and cut or if you have a coordinating die, that's probably your best option. <laughs> this was not fun to cut out. And I fussy cut all the time, so it doesn't usually bother me. So I have a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock here. I have my panels pre-cut, so I just grabbed one out of my stash. And I had to end up trimming down my image a little bit further, but I just am playing around with placement I knew I wanted to use the rose gold cardstock, but I honestly had no idea what I was going to do with it. So I'm just playing it around here to figure out how I wanted to set up my card. Ultimately, I ended up trimming a little strip off that A2 size card panel there, as well as cutting a strip of the same rose gold cardstock that I will use kind of as a border for my card panel itself. I went ahead and used the thanks die that is also part of the kit and I will go ahead and run that through my Gemini with another piece of this rose gold cardstock. I'm pretty obsessed with it <laughs> and it cuts out beautifully. It die cuts beautifully. So uh, next on to the assembly of the card. I didn't want to pop up my rose gold cardstock because I thought it was just going to be a little too much. So I ended up taking my Tombow Mono Multi Glue and adhering that to the top right hand corner of my card panel. This is super easy to stick down because the other side of it is actually like a craft card stock. So it's not shiny or anything like it is on the side that we're actually working on. So I went ahead and adhered that to that top right hand corner. You can see that I have a lot of it hanging off there. You can just snip this off with scissors or in this case, I'm bringing out my paper trimmer and just trimming off any excess. Next, I'm adhering this down to my card panel itself, and this is where I realized that I adhered it down to my side folding card base, and it was backwards, or yeah, the card base was backwards. So I'm hoping that you guys can relate because this is not the first time I've done this. It will not be the last time I've done this. So I'm hoping that you guys can relate to this. So I had to quickly pull that off. That's the great thing about using wet glue. Grab another card base and adhere this the right way. And I'm adhering this all the way off to the right hand side of the card base. I'm going to add this little strip of this rose gold cardstock right to the left hand side so that it creates a little bit of a border. And then adhering the thanks die cut with that same Tombow Mono Multi Glue. Again, super easy to adhere because of that craft uh, or craft cardstock on the back of it. I finished off with one of the stamps from the stamp set and stamped that directly underneath that thanks die with that black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp. And then I just trimmed off that little bit of extra rose gold cardstock that I had hanging off the left hand side of the card. And that is it for that one. And moving on to the fifth and final card, we are going to be doing a little bit of masking. A lot of masking actually, <laughs> but we're gonna create a background. So I'm using the single flower here and I like to start right in the center, then work my way around it. So I stamped one right in the center or I eyeballed it. And then I'm just kind of creating a pattern all throughout the entire card panel. And this will create somewhat of a symmetrical background. Once I had that done and I am stamping with blackout ink, 
because I thought I was going to cope with color, but I didn't. And I have a piece of Simon Says Stamp masking paper, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this same image out. I stamped it 12 times, even though there's 13 stamps or 13 images on the card panel, because I figured I could probably cut one and reuse it more than once. And I fussy cut all of my masks. I know a lot of people use a scan and cut. I feel like I don't get the greatest masks from the scan and cut. I feel like I can get a, I can do a better job fussy cutting them. And quite honestly, even though there's 12 of these, it didn't really take me long, maybe five, six minutes. So there's all of my masks off to the side and I started off with the full images. So the ones that are pretty much in the center of the card base or card panel, mask those out and then I moved around all of the edges. I did have a little bit of a corner there that was not masked. <laughs> so I just took a little scrap piece of the post-it, full stick post-it note tape and, and just stuck down that to the corner. So I'm going to be doing some ink blending and I'm going to be doing, I guess, a rainbow. So I'm starting off with festive berries on the top. I'm using a blending buddy brush or a couple of them from Trinity Stamps. And as I work my way down the card panel, I'm not necessarily getting the greatest blend and I'm okay with that. These colors are naturally going to blend nicely together as long as you go in this order because it's the colors of a rainbow and they blend. So you're not going to get horrible results if you were only to go over this one time. But once I reach the bottom of the card panel, you'll see that I'll work my way back up. Sometimes I add more ink to my blending brush and other times I don't. I kind of just work with whatever ink is kind of laying on the surface. I'm using Distress Oxides. However, you can use regular Distress inks or you can use other dye inks as well. You may get really good results with those as well. But because of the Distress Oxides sit on top of the paper, they don't necessarily absorb into the paper like regular dye inks do. You have a lot more time to work with them and to kind of spread out that color a little bit more. So you'll see sometimes even when I am adding more ink to the blending brush to get the colors to blend, I'm pretty much just tapping it onto the, onto the ink pad because I don't need more ink on the paper. I just need them to blend. So once I reached the bottom and then went back up to the top portion of the card panel here, I did let my panel dry for about five or 10 minutes. Like I said, these inks sit on top of the paper and you do want to make sure they're at least a little bit dry before you remove your masks. Because the masks are sticky and the moisture kind of seeps through, you can tear your card panel itself if you remove your masks while the panel is still wet. So I like to use the tip of my scissors to get the mask started to peeling up and then I just remove the rest with my fingers. Once this was all done, I did take a couple of Copic markers just to fill in those, some of those white outlines that I didn't have my mask perfectly lined up. And I just picked a color that best fits whatever Distress Oxide ink that I have in that area. I trimmed down all four sides of my panel by an eighth of an inch so that I still had an even pattern. And then I'm taking another piece of black cardstock, treating it with my anti-static tool once again. No surprise here, we are creating a white heat emboss sentiment strip. But I kept this on here just to kind of show you how to, or how I fix some of the mistakes sometimes that we get with heat embossing. So you can see here, or hopefully you guys can see, I have a few pieces of stray embossing powder that are stuck to areas I don't want it to. I'm taking a craft knife to kind of push those away but because this sentiment is so tiny, it's kind of hard to get all of them. So once it's heat set and the embossing powder is cool, it only takes like 10 seconds, I'm taking a black pen. This is just the EK Success Journaling pen. And being, I'm working on black cardstock here, I just colored over those stray pieces of embossing powder. And I didn't have a problem, you can't even tell they're there. Went ahead and cut this down into a strip. I cut one side of the strip straight and then one at the other side at an angle just to add a little bit of interest. I layered my card panel onto a piece of black card stock that is just slightly larger than the card panel but slightly smaller than the card base itself and then adhered that down to a top folding white A2 size note card and popped up my sentiment strip with that same X-Fasten foam tape right there in the center just kind of line that up the best I could and 
that is it for card number five, super simple. So here's a very quick look at all five of the cards that we have created today. I will leave a list of supplies that I used today in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day. Bye.